Hello friends and welcome to a new video. Today we'll be going over all of the games I've played so far in the ESL Spring Regionals uh, 2024. My first series of this group stage was against Uthermal, the good old duchy that I've played many, many times in the past. This is the first time, however, that I'm playing my opponent while he's playing random, spawning on side delta. Now, I prepared quite a little bit for this series, mainly because I respect Uthermal a lot as a player. I think he's very smart. I think he's very capable. I think I think one of the main skills that Uthermal has is winning games no matter what. He's really good at just making sure that he wins. And uh, with random, I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen to me. I didn't want to be a victim of one of his random shenanigans. So I did the research. I figured out what builds he has in each matchup. And on top of that, I also had to figure out a good opener for myself. And that isn't so easy because Protoss versus Random is actually quite bad for Protoss. You are forced into walling on the low ground, which means it's really quite bad in PvP if you don't want to play one gate expand. It also kind of sucks, honestly, against Terran. I much prefer having an anti-Reaper wall. So it changes the way that all matchups are played except for PvZ, really. So I was hoping for my opponent to get Zerg as much as possible. Uh, one, because it makes my wall a lot more useful. And two, because Zerg is also his weakest race. I noticed that Uthermal had a very limited pool of build orders in the Zerg versus Protoss matchups. And the moment I saw a 15 hatch, which is what I saw here, um, I knew that most likely this was going to be a Queen Ling drop. The moment I saw this, because these were the only two builds I saw in play. Now, I of course can't blindly just be like, oh, uh, hatch first, uh, 15 hatch, this has to be it. Like, you still need to get the confirmations. Um, but I have a decent idea of what he's capable of. I know his range of builds. And this is one of the disadvantages that playing random brings you, is that you need to have builds prepared for all matchups, for all sides of the matchups as well, which makes it difficult to have a large diversity of builds that you feel very comfortable with. Which is why often people have uh, like two, three all ins per matchup, and then they kind of rotate them rather than figuring out good different macro openers, which requires much more work, of course. So I knew his 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 range doesn't mean he couldn't have anything special prepared. So as always, I'm just scouting around, making sure everything is normal. I am happy though with the fact that he's a Zerg player. Um, he's trying to pass me by with his links maybe scouting at the same time as well i wonder how many protos players will just go for like a blind 3-8 or something <laughs> against a, a random player i bet that must have happened like because they don't want to play against random right it's like oh, i freaking hate this matchup let's just proxy three gates and i guess sometimes it could work it can work against all races so technically a good anti-random build i decided rather than finishing this shade i actually just want to clear his uh, his links and i get the one link and i'm gonna get the second link as well i'm still having my pro patrol in front of his natural so i'm yeah i, I have full info that i'm not being you know that not something really weird is happening make sure to not lose my worker here either and uh, start my next adapt instantly as well still want to go across the map with this bad boy to figure out exactly what's going on See if I can get a shade maybe on the layer off, which would be great. That could confirm some of my suspicions, you know? Um, in my mind, by the way, I wanted to open up with a Void Ray first, but I decided against it during this game because I wanted some more scouting info. Void Ray first would have been kind of a hard counter because he always sends two overlords across the map. Killing both of these would have been huge. Um, I see the lair. So once again, kind of an added on confirmation of that he is going most likely for some type of link drop. On top of that, I'm... Uh, so yeah, my, my Voyager is going to be second here. On top of that, something that I also really want to do is get some vision on this third base uh, to know whether it's going to be some type of Hydra all in or maybe more of a, a Ling Flood type of build. Because once again, that's the, the range of builds that I've seen him play. I got a lot of replays from a lot of different people, which I'm very grateful for. Um, it's an important part of the research is actually getting the data and... Um, I, I just, you know, I managed to watch uh, quite a few replays as well as a bunch of VODs, which helped me a bunch uh, to prepare for this. The enemy has discovered us. I throw down a Twilight Council as well. I get the, the revelation. And here I see kind of the lack of drones in the natural as I'm starting to look for any potential overlords on this side of the map. I think I find one here right now. Yep, there we go. I see nothing really going on. Just gonna get a battery out here as well. Just keeping my, uh, my my oracle kind of in front of his base as I see two overlords start instantly. I 
build two stalkers, send my void ray back and start a battery in my natural. Now, another important thing here is that whenever he does an attack, he almost always, almost always, not always, but almost always goes in at the same time with a drop in the main base. And I'm aware of this, so I'm hyper focused on that this is a possibility. I don't think I blind build any units there. I probably just should have sent my, my Void Ray to the bottom side to clear any potential Overlords because he often goes to the main. Here come three Dropper Lords. And now we see this Overlord moving into my main base. As I said, I'm pretty hyper aware of this. Um, so my Void Ray goes there instantly. Oh, actually manages to slip by my Adept. And uh, I clear up this thing. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. I have to use my... Uh, my oracle here for a little bit now the good thing for me obviously is that his worker count is terrible when i was watching replays he was doing this of like 30 29 workers or so so a really garbage level uh, uh worker count so even if i lose this third base i believe to still be in a good position i actually move a bit too far away from my battery while also not paying attention as a result i actually get surrounded this looks a little bit scary for me now uh, but once again, with the knowledge that I can always give up this base if I have to. I still have a battery in the far back as well. I'm transitioning into Glaive Adept, by the way. Um, because I knew this was going to be pure Link. So rather than getting Blink, uh, I'm just getting Glaive Adept. Once my Glaive finishes, life is actually going to be really good for me. Because these Adepts are going to be busting him open. Right, uh, right in the skull, the way that you want it against Zergs. As I'm just warping some Adepts here on the bottom side, away from the Queens. I'm hold positioning my probes as well to make sure that the Queens can't. Uh, burst on through and at this point my uh, my adept glaives have finished you see my adepts are actually attacking the queen which is a dumb mistake should be attacking links my probe should be attacking queens and now uh, with the help of some sim city as well as uh, yeah, still having lots of probes six gateways i got our first win types out the gg and i'm very happy with this one side delta would have been a rough map against this terran but he didn't get there and he got zerg instead and that's the uh the sadness, of course, of playing random sometimes is that you don't get the race you want to. I quickly check the replay, but we're heading into the next game. And that next game is on Dynasty. I scouted for a potential proxy in case he got Terran and decided to proxy me. I want to at least spot the closest by proxies. I saw him do that quite a bit in his replays. Um, he also did this later on in the tournament. Still, I saw him proxy quite a bit. Um, I think against Drogo in particular, he did it. And uh, now I see that he's Terran. This is the worst thing for me because I think his Terran is, is actually very good still. Um, I, I wasn't overly impressed by his PvP or by his ZVP. So um, yeah, there, there was a pretty decent chance that I would get a matchup that I liked. This is not necessarily a matchup that I like, especially not playing against a double gas opener, which is what he always does or almost always does. And when, when I don't have a Reaper wall, it feels very uncomfortable for me because uh, I don't have a pylon in my main base and I don't have a wall. So it makes it hard for me to build a battery in my main. Or well, actually, it makes it impossible for me to build a battery in my main. Luckily for me, I also am completely familiar with exactly what follow-ups he would do. Or 90% of the time, I saw him play a Reaper into Reactor, into two more Reapers and then two Hellion and go for some type of attack. So um, he felt fairly limited in his, uh, in his build orders which made it easier for me to predict what was going to happen. And as a result, I can kind of, you know, anticipate uh, what is going to go on. So I'm just chrono boosting two adapts. I'm going to play my patented Stargate opener, the two gate Stargate. I made a guide on uh, about uh, two, three weeks back or so. It's one of the builds I'm very happy with. It's also one of the builds. You know when a guide is good is when other pro gamers use your guide. Um, I got a couple of messages on Discord. Uh, they're like, hey, like, uh, of actual Protoss players, like, hey, I've been using your guide. It's been working really well. It's like, nice. You know, that makes me very happy because then you know it it lifts up to a, a very high standard. So, I, yeah. Also, very often, my guides also get used by people off-racing, but that's, of course, a little bit of a lower bar. Like, Lambo's off-race is very good, but it's not as good as having, a, you know, a, a, one of the top Protoss players uh, using it. That always makes me very happy to uh you know when when they approve of my build enough of tooting my own horn as uh i'm gonna get some phoenixes out here i'm trying to wall that right side did a little pylon it's not really a wall it's more of a just a spotter as i'm keeping adept adept stalker here battery on the low ground first phoenix is gonna go across the map as he decides to pop on in i'm a little bit slow with my pool on the um, on the adept, so I'm gonna split up the shots. 
uh, kill one for free. Hellion's going towards the naturals. It's just an uncomfortable situation, really. This is why I freaking hate doing this type of stuff. I'm really not a huge fan of uh, yeah playing against random, to be honest. I really, really dislike it. Because I don't have a wall. Couldn't have a battery in my main. Uh, but honestly, I, I did well enough here. I didn't lose so many works. I think I lost one or two. I killed like two Reapers. I think I killed a Hellion as well and damaged another one. So this situation feels really quite safe for me. On top of that, because he built the two extra Reapers, it's unlikely he's going to go for a tank push as a follow-up. What I've seen him do quite a bit is go into things like Cloak Banshee behind it. So I'm kind of hawkish on that. It's like, hey, like, are you researching Cloak? I saw a Viking now, but... You know, it may be still happening, but uh, the answer seems to be kind of no. Um, just going to be a Viking. I get a Forge as well. And I continue with uh, with my Phoenixes on top of that, of course. Taking the gold. He already has the gold. This is one of the reasons why... Oh, I'm not actually that huge a fan of this map. It's because Terran can quite easily take the gold on this map. Um, I fly in, get a one kill, get two kills, get three kills... And I fly out. So now I've already dealt more damage than he dealt to me. And I actually feel really comfortable in this game at this moment. Like I got my macro going. I'm legit zero afraid of a push out. I saw the two extra barracks. Which 99% of the time indicates him waiting for Stim before his first move out. So I'm just kind of flying around. I'm having a blast. Uh, making sure that I don't lose any phoenixes to dumb mines or something like that. And any worker I can kill here at this point is going to be a huge bonus for me, right? So I'm just going in. And I'm actually getting quite a few kills again, so that's going to go up to, what, 7 now? Maybe, yeah. I can't, I can't even lift anymore because I'm out of energy. Uh, he's going to get a kill here, which sucks for me, obviously. I wish he didn't. He's going to get another kill. No, he's not going to get another kill. Then he moves away. It's kind of a cute move. Um, really do like that. I, I love when Terrans, they utilize their early game units in such a way that they're still useful later on. Uh, and he's definitely doing that, so I, I truly do appreciate that. So I do catch a bit of a weird move out now. I'm like, oh, what the heck is this? Because um, he doesn't have any medevacs yet. I now start focusing on killing units. Because I see two extra barracks here as well. I'm like, oh, he's playing five ranks. This is very odd. So I'm adding more gateways. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm just quite confused as to what is what really is going on, right? Because uh, I saw him move out, but he doesn't have medevacs. Now I see a mine here showing up as well. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of odd. I'm just honestly I'm just really confused at this point like so what is actually kicking off I'm just continuing to kill units so you almost lose a, a dude there but I don't almost lose a phoenix it's also such an uncomfortable thing I think the mine is still there by the way I could be wrong did I miss that yeah, I think the mine hits me and I go that was not so bright by me to be honest not a very good play I'm not proud of that okay but his army is here. He doesn't have a, a medevac. I don't even think he has stim. Definitely doesn't have combat shield. I, I really thought something was going to happen in my natural at this point. So I'm just sending my phoenixes to the left. I'm really confused at this point. I just don't quite understand what's happening. I have 10 gates. Uh, which is also a little bit high. My robo is quite late. So I don't feel comfortable going into like a super macro game. I kind of want to fight right now. Um, kill a couple more workers for free. So that's what, like worker freaking 9 and 10 or something, or 8 and 9 that I'm killing here. And now I walk just kind of into his third base. See that he's building a CC there. I'm like, oh, he doesn't have that many units, right? So see what we can do here. This is risky, and I think it's genuinely a stupid move. Uh, but sometimes in life you need to make stupid moves. You just have to do that. So I go in for a stupid move. Um, doesn't have so many units. At the same time, I lose all my workers in the natural. And I see a lot of worker uh, units actually in the main base as well. I'm really not happy with that. Uh, we still have a bunch of boys coming in at this point. As uh, he's trying to move downstairs. But I have so many phoenixes, I can just pick up all of the anti-air. And that's kind of my saving grace here. Because without that, it might have been hard. Get the GG. Get the W. As I win my first series uh, relatively easily with a 2-0 score. And I get to go into the next round of the Swiss tournament. The format that is being used in this tournament is indeed the Swiss. And what that means is that, or it's, I think it's called a pseudo-Swiss. It's not entirely Swiss, but kind of Swiss. Kind of Swiss. Um, basically, if you win a match, you're playing against someone that has also won a match. And then if you lose one, you're playing someone that's also won one. And if you win one, you go up against someone that's 2-0. So you get fairly evenly matched matches the entire way through, which is pretty fun. Um, 
And my next opponent here is going to be Lambo, my teammate, a Zerg player. I think at the moment the PvZ matchup is very good for Protoss. Uh, I really do like both the late stages of the mid game as well as the late game, but I feel fairly uncomfortable in the first six, seven minutes or so. Um, it's pretty much the opposite of what I feel in PvP. In PvP I feel great in the first eight, nine minutes of the game and then I feel terrible the longer the game goes. But in uh, in this matchup, the longer the game goes, the better I feel and the shorter it is, the worse I tend to perform. So my goal here is just to stay alive and get into a late game because I think the late game is um, slightly favored for the, for the Protal side right now. Um, so as long as I stay alive, I'm happy. And often the best way to stay alive in this matchup is by being a, a little bit aggressive, you know, there's a little, a little bit of aggression. So my plan on the first map is going to uh, be to go for a, a glaive timing. A, uh, a fun little four gate glaive timing and with this glaive timing my goal is to kill as many drones as i can uh, force out a lot of units and then either kind of force him to all in into me which i feel comfortable against or um, just be very far behind and play a macro game those are my goals the one thing i don't want is for my push to do nothing and for him to kind of play like a macro game and a later timing that would be the worst case scenario for me so um, just try my best to harass a little bit before this game, I actually felt very fast. Like, I, I was warming up, and some days I feel fast, some days I feel slow. Against Uthermo, I actually felt relatively slow on that day, I recall. Um, but against Lambo, I remember thinking, man, my mouse is so accurate. Like, I feel really good. I slept like a beast as well the night before. Like, just, you know, like massive, like, nine hours or so. Like, solid sleep as well. You could feel it, you know? Like, I was awake. I was awake. I was so freaking awake. I was looking forward to this game. So, chronoing these bad boys out, just making sure nothing weird is happening. I'm going back in, I'm checking for any extra uh, links maybe running by, seeing a drone transfer here, which is great. And then my uh, adept kind of covers the other lane here. Well, at this point, over the past few days, I've been thinking a lot about adept harass in general, and I have no real thoughts on it, to be honest. Like, I've just... I've been so inconsistent on what I think Adept Harass should look like and how I should be moving my Adept and what I should be doing. I've been watching a lot of replays of other top pro players and I think at this point I wasn't... I, I thought I had more of an idea about it. I was more confident in what I was doing than I am now. Um, although when I look back, I'm not very happy with what I'm doing. But sometimes just being confident in, your, in, in something crappy is better than... You know, feeling insecure in something that is very good. I feel like right now I'm insecure in something that is good. Back here, I was confident in my crap. But it, it was quite crap, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna play two Oracle as an opener. And then follow it up with a, a relatively quick Twilight Council. Overlord popped into my main base at some point already. My goal here is to not die. Not lose my Nexus to anything stupid. See a Ling moving across. My goal here is to get two worker kills. If I get that, I'm happy. Anything less, I'm not so happy. So I think I got one worker here. Quite a bit of hole damage as well, which is actually not great. Actually really sucks. And I'm gonna add my two gateways now. Yeah, there we go. Happy with the execution of this build. I have two oracles. Ideally I get, in total, with the two adepts and the two oracles, I want like between five and seven worker kills, I think that is a good number. I also don't want to lose an oracle. That is very important. Um, so I get zero extra worker kills here and I lose an oracle, which actually freaking sucks. Not so happy with how this is going now. Chrono on the glaives. One more adapter down here. And I'm just trying to deny some creep. Often denying a lot of creep is a symptom of a follow-up blink push. That would be good. I, I want him to believe that this is Blink. Blink hits a little bit later, and the counter to Blink is getting a lot of links with plus one. And I actually want to fight against a lot of links, because a lot of links are not so good against a lot of adepts. A lot of adepts actually win against a lot of links. So uh, my main goal here really is to deny scouting, not allow him to see that I'm building stalkers or whether I'm building stalkers. You see. Give up. Give us your so I'm just busy denying scouting here. Three adepts on the map. Can't do much else because of course I lost my my adept earlier. 
yeah, so he's he's definitely gonna get some scouting info here, but I'm also pretty freaking ready to just go across the map at this point, so that's exactly what I'm gonna end up doing. I'm trying to deny that scout doesn't quite work. And I'm gonna hit it about uh, six minutes into this game. Get a forge, probably wanna get an immortal and a little bit supply blocker as well here. Despite my good feeling earlier on, not the greatest execution. So here I try to shade in. See Bane, is this the worst case scenario? So I'm just gonna run back home. See if I can get a Templar Archives, but I can't get my units home. He kills a bunch of them. I lose all of my aggressive momentum. Um, and this is a super uncomfortable spot right now that I'm in. I start a prism. I probably want to follow this up with some type of harass with my... I mean, I need to get something done. I can't just sit here and do nothing. And I'm trying to desperately fight here. I'm extremely afraid as well at this point of a potential baneling attack coming in. So I warp in a sentry. That does feel kind of okay. I'll try to full wall the, the left side here. Yeah, good force field. I'm actually okay with how that went. He's morphing in more and more banelings here. But my... My spot is so freaking uncomfortable. Stalks are great to warp in to deal with banelings. Should have gotten one more sentry there, by the way. Uh, for the people wondering what I did wrong there. But one more sentry here would have been great, yeah. Now I'm trying to build it. Gotta full wall my natural as well. As uh, I do clear this. I'm supply block, which is frustrating because all of my gates are finishing. Uh, I lost a bunch of pylons, or at least I think I lost one or two. And also, I just haven't been building enough pylons during all of this. I'm just going to try and scout as to what is kicking off. The one thing that's going well for me is that I have a prism going across the map. And he did waste a lot of larva with all of the links he was building. And I hardly lost any workers. So I thought my position was really bad. But I think my position now is just regular bad. Like It's not great because I have really no tech. And I probably can't get a fourth phase down. Uh, but I'm going to try anyway. And, you, know, you can always try. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. I like. I'm a big. I'm a big. I'm, I'm a big fan of trying in general. Um, yeah, he's moving in with banelings. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna even try to to keep my fort. But it does kind of act as as massive bait here. So he's being baited by my fort, which I'm not even sure if I end up canceling. And as a result, I get quite a few drone kills here, which I'm super happy about uh, because that's really keeping my chances alive. On top of that. I can actually fight with these links. I also see that he's building Hydras, so I'm fully expecting Hydras at this point to come out. Have I already started my storm at this point? I hope I have. Uh, if not, uh, it's not great. I'm flooding quite a bit of cash as well, which also isn't great. Yeah, my storm hadn't started quite yet. Got a second robotics facility. Once again, my goal is just to stay alive, so I'm just gonna stay on three days for, you know, quite some time. I don't entirely mind that. As this fort is about to poof, plop down. Hey, that wasn't great either. We got one more Templar. The Zealot Rumbites are actually dealing quite a bit of damage. I'm getting more and more batteries and cannons on three. Because at this point, I'm, you know, it's it's all or nothing for me. Or well, it's actually nothing. I never get all. It's either we're playing a game or I'm dead. Because I'm really afraid of his incoming push. I don't think I can hold a fort base. I just keep trying though. Because I kind of want him to go for my fort rather than my third. <laughs> as long as he's killing my fort base, my probes are safe. That's my thinking here. Uh, I'm really not feeling this position uh, at all. I have a uh, an observer that's going to provide me with quite a bit of vision. Super helpful. And I have two full energy sentries. And these sentries can be kind of big. Because I get a neat set of force fields here. A very neat set of force fields. I don't lose any Templar yet in this fight. And he loses a bunch of Banelings. At the same time, my counterattack here is coming in. And that forces him back home. Now I finally feel comfortable into taking my fort base. And not losing it straight up. And I try to micro. It doesn't quite work out. As I move my prism to a safe spot. We're fairly late into the game. Before I finally get to take my fort. But his eco isn't brilliant either. Um, he hasn't tried to transition. He tried to kill me. So I'm just scouting here with these zealots. Trying to figure out, hey, what is going on? And so far, I'm not seeing a whole lot. So what is going on? I really want to get that fort base uh, going at some point. Especially the extra gases is going to be huge. Salad attack at the same time of this. Salad on the left, so he's up to 10 gas already is what I see here. I'm gonna try and put this into the main, but there's spores there as well. Missed my force field, that's frustrating. Semi hit a storm. As I feel like he's trying to win time. 
And I see that he's on 10 gas. So I'm expecting a lurker transition here. That's the only transition that truly makes any sense to me. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here is try and get maybe a little bit of a zealot run by while simultaneously also going for an attack. Or maybe I just go for an actual attack. I hope I go for a zealot run by, to be honest. Okay, I go for a zealot run by to the left, which is weird because I'm also moving to the left. Maybe I saw these links. Ooh! Actually very happy I sent it to the left because I spotted this army. So I managed to detonate one bane there. I also have a zealot run by to the right side, which spots these links. As my prism is going to move towards the far right side, see if I can warp something in there, force some of his units back home. So I'm kind of using this left side run by. This is actually a good move by me to spot whether he's there or not, and then kind of distract him with that. Uh, as now I'm starting to move on creep, at the same time my run by is hitting on the left side. Um, just as a distraction, I'm moving some of the units back as well. He's trying to set up a flank, uh, but I catch the flank. He's not really paying attention as I hit two big storms there. Uh, clearing quite, quite a few units, as well as just dishing out a bunch of damage. Loses some banes down there. I'm trying to desperately send my, uh, my, my prism back to my main army. I hope I can get it, but I don't have super high hopes for that. The sniders are going to get caught at minus five. I'm just trying to warp in more and more of these guys. And I'm trying... To, I'm figuring out that he's probably just trying to buy time here. He's not really... He's not fighting me, you know? He's not He's not trying to fight me. So I'm like, wait a second. There's probably something weird happening here. As I start to move into the belly of the beast. And the belly of the beast is uh, filled with morphing lurkers on the left side. And that's what I see. I'm like, wait a second, buddy. We didn't agree to this. I almost stormed my own observer, but not quite. I take out all of his lurkers. He comes in with the flank. As uh, I pick up my Templar and I win the first game uh, much easier than I ever think I, I, I should have after how the early game went. Um, I was very happy with this. I uh, don't think I played too hard in the first six, seven minutes. After that, I think a lot of nice decisions and a W. You have not enough now the next game on El Sioni, I scouted for the gold and I saw that he was transferring workers over towards the gold. Um, I can't entirely remember what my thought process was in this game, in particular. I think what I wanted to do was to play a Stargate over, as that's what I usually do, and then go into Fast Blink. Um, I felt a little bit shaky though with the builds, because he kind of hard countered me in the last game, and he, I think he guessed correctly there, so I was afraid that he was in my head a little bit, and he could figure out what I was yeah. doing. Uh, whenever I see this base being taken, I immediately am very afraid of things like Queen Walks, and he has done a lot of Queen Walks against me on this map uh, in the past, and he's beaten me many, many times with it, so I think I had a good reason to, uh, you know, to be afraid. He actually finished these rocks quite a bit quicker than he used to in the past. So I watched replays between me and him on this map, and he usually would clear the rocks at 247 or 246. So here he cleared them a few seconds quicker, so this quick adapt didn't do as much as I would have liked it to. I take quite a bit of damage on my uh, my first adept as well. Here's all the links over here. That's so crazy. I almost feel like I should have cancelled that shade. It would have been maybe bad, though. I don't know. It's so hard, like I said. I am I feel insecure right now about my adept movement. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Can't help myself. As um, we're, we're gonna get the uh, yeah a, another oracle out after this. It's so funny seeing yourself play like even just five or six days back because you have such different thoughts about the game now. Where it's like oh, because here I was really certain that two oracle into tech was the best way to play. I'm not so certain about that anymore. I got one kill here, which is fairly mediocre. I think I lost my worker as well on top of that, which is also fairly mediocre. This is very standard in this uh, in this particular matchup where they have a gold, because when they have a gold, they don't have enough. They don't need as many drones, so they often build a couple of extra links. I lost two probes here, which is really frustrating for me. I'm gonna lose a third probe as well. He also loses a bunch of links, which. You know, that it is what it is, I guess. I'm late with my Twilight Council. Or do I have it already? Oh, maybe I already have my Twilight Council. Yeah, that would make more sense. I'm like, this is really late. Yeah, okay, there we go. Twilight Council is going up. Trying to pick up any drones that are, you know, reinforcing between the bases. As well as taking out this Overlord. Guys. I warp in a single Stalker here. Or sorry, two Stalkers. Kill that bad boy and I start my blink. 
poof, and I chrono it. I still haven't really dealt any damage. I felt like in this series, whenever I tried to do something with harassment, I just kind of got shut down. Which is really freaking frustrating, to be honest. Like, it really sucks when that happens. We meet our fate. Okay, and now I'm gonna get caught here. I hope to get a kill here on this queen. Which I do. That's nice. My first real damage that I dealt. Which does help. I don't see a fort base yet. So my mind is immediately going to, hey, uh, what is kicking off here? You know, like, are you are you roach walking me? Are you roach queen walking? All right, like, well, what is it you're actually doing? I lose two adepts in the middle of the map. Which also kind of sucks, to be honest. And I'm just trying to figure out what he's doing. I see a gas there. I see some worker. I really want to get a fort base view. I need to have a view on the fort. Without a view on the fort, life's going to be sucky for me. As uh, my stalkers here are going to get caught in the middle of the map a bit. Uh, no oracle support nearby. I'm going to get my next stalker, go up to 10 of them. And then try and go across the map with Blink. See if I can deal any damage. At least deny a little bit of creep, so that his uh, inevitable queen walk is going to be delayed. I see he's going for like a kind of a flanking motion. I don't think I should have actually gone back here. This wasn't enough links to deal with this at all. Now I've given him so much time. The entire point for me is to kind of hit sharply, but I'm not hitting sharp anymore at all. I'm actually hitting very dull. This is a dull attack. Um, like I'm hitting so late that if you're going for a timing attack like I'm here with a lower oracle count, the main point is that you hit fast. I'm not hitting fast. I kind of lost the main point here, didn't I? Which is not great. So I'm losing some stalkers. And just adding some gateways here. I feel super uncomfortable in this game again. And the only thing that's really left for me is to uh, probably throw down a Templar Archives, which I think is the correct call here. Yeah. Adding another battery. Yeah, I'm still not really sure what he's up to. I actually have no clue what he's up to. I see very little work still on this base, which is surprising to me. I guess he built a lot of links. See the Evo. And a Roach finally popping out. Fifth base is here as well. Once again, I want to check the worker count on this fourth. Still fairly low. It really does surprise me. I think it surprised me back then as well. I wish I already started a fourth base, though. I think it would be nice to have a fourth going. There we go. He tries to attack my natural. I wonder if I can actually clean this. No, I can't. I'm so deadly afraid right now. You guys have no clue. Because I have no clue what's kicking off, right? I, I legit have no idea whether I'm winning or losing. Now I see Roach across the map. I'm like, wait, what? What the hell? Is he actually trying to attack me? I got a slow warp in Stalker. Get a revelation, and I see the gases. And now I remember thinking at this point, if he actually would have gone for like a committed roach attack, I would have just been dead. Like this game went so bad for me. I did nothing right so far. Absolutely nothing. Uh, so now he's about to hit this base as well. I mean, I can't even take a fourth base at this point. And, uh, you know, I'm dreaming of a fourth. And he's thinking of saturating his fifth at the moment. Which is not a good look. This pylon is also terrible because it doesn't provide me with quick warpins. Trying to get units out desperately as we see some of these boys coming in as well. Gonna take out one of my batteries. Hey, my fort base is absolute toast, right? Hey, there's no way I can actually hold this. Absolutely no way. Now he's playing Banelings, and against Banelings you always have a chance, because Banelings right now, the current patch, are just not so hot. Storms are really good against them, Archons are really good against them, Immortals are really good against them, Stalkers are fine. Like. Literally every unit you can build is pretty decent against it, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm The Baneling is the unit that scares me the least, out of all the units that currently exist. I'm gonna probably get at least one Archon, yeah. That's a good call there, Kevin. I'm just trying my best here to kind of keep things uh, in check, to throw some storms down. Just being very patient with them, because they don't have so many. That second storm wasn't so great. From before that was kind of okay. Here comes a, a flank. And a morph in time as well. And although this wasn't super great for me, because I don't have any tempo remaining, my Archons did more or stayed alive at least. Um, I have quite a decently sized army still. And I have a lot of gas in the bank, which is actually kind of huge. I'm really quite happy with it. I can even push this back just a tiny tad. 
As at the same time also sending in a big salad warp in. So he has roaches ready already. As well as some uh, some links. So, yeah, no, feeling super comfortable. My plan now is, is to just kind of camp on Immortal Archon Storm. Sit back. I wish I had a, a prism out on the map, which I don't. But I really wish I did. God, I wish I had a prism out on the map at the moment. That would be epic. Absolutely epic, even. But I really don't. Oh, here's a prism. That's nice. He's once again coming in for an attack. At this point, I'm starting to feel a bit more comfortable. Like, my gas unit count is going up. Um, I have a couple of storms ready as well. I think I saw an attack coming in towards my natural or my third. Yeah, it's going in towards my natural. I have a, a dude about to finish up there, though. Big fat immortal. This is a good setup as well. Had I split my units, this would have been really bad for me, but because I didn't split, this actually ends up being quite okay. Uh, I'll try to go for some harassment here with my prism. This setup remains stable, and I'm starting to feel a bit better into this game, except that I lose my prism like a moron. That wasn't quite brilliant. He's still trying to find angles to kill me. Um, I wonder if that's the correct call in this type of situation, or it's better to transition into Lurker or into Broodlord. Ah, Broodlord sucks because then you give up a lot, I guess, but... Yeah, it's hard to say sometimes. What the Zerg exactly should be doing. Because I think late game is really difficult for them. Okay, here we have a, a bit of an awkward split. I have an army here, which is a good fight for me. So I take out some links, and I don't take any serious damage. At the same time, I have some of these boys coming in. I'm glad I didn't finish this wall, by the way. Otherwise, my probe would not be capable of uh, escaping. Let's uh, try to move him forward. And now I finally feel like I'm stable. As in, I am set up. I don't really worry about anything. The thing I'm most worried about is like a Brute Lord push, because I have zero map control. The way you usually deal with Brute Lord pushes is by counterattacking. But I don't really have that ability. Why don't I have that ability? Well, very simple. It's because I have no army that can allow me to be out on the map. Okay, so I can now match, start matching his army on each side. That's the, the first step, really. And then I can split up my army in two parts. And from there on out, we're usually kind of okay. I'm just gonna send this prism with the zealot in as well. My oracles are uh, spotting his army movement. Let us it's getting a pretty sizable force there on the left. And I see nothing happening for quite a while, which does scare me at least a little bit. I'm not, you know, not stoked about it. It's like, oh, nothing happening? That's great, man. I love that. It's like, no, I'm actually quite afraid. That probably means he's transitioning into something, and I have no clue what, because I have legit zero. No vision. I'm blind as a duck. A lot of ducks do have eyes. So I'm blind as a mole. Moles also have eyes, I think, but I don't think they work. Actually, don't I? I think moles have eyes, right? When they get... I don't think I've ever seen a mole in real life, to be honest. This is an okay trade for me. I lose a Templar, I kill a bunch of his other stuff. As I send the Prism into the main base. My first Tempest is out as well, which is actually very useful. My entire goal here is just to stay alive. Poof, poof, poof. Prism stays alive, forces a lot of units back. As he's trying to attack into me right here. Uh, I got a couple of decent sized storms off. Got another storm off. I think I can kill at least one lurker with that. Maybe even two. And now my Tempests are about to show up. And the Tempests are going to be a lifesaver because it allows me to poke at this from a distance. And if I can poke at things from a distance, life usually is quite okay. Still have the, the setup over here. I now have vision off the middle as well. And I'm starting to look towards taking a fifth base. Which would be great for me. I wish I had a couple of Archons on this right side army, by the way. I think that would be fantastic. Just to deal with the potential links around. The only way you're losing a fight here as Toss is if you get surrounded by a lot of links and they start attacking your immortals. And having one or two Archons really helps. If you're not paying attention with the storms, for example, it's going to be a great thing to have. Recall this bad boy back home. Good set of force fields. Or at least good enough, I think. Yeah, 
take out this entire roach force. Very nice. Tempest are out. Just kind of crawling forward. Move towards the, the left side with this army. Now the beauty of the left side army is that I can always recall it if I want to. It uh, gives me a free corruptor. I'm not entirely sure why. That is. Um, so I can always send this army into my main force, you know? Which would have been huge to have here. Or it would be huge to have. I have to move forward with uh, quite some units. A couple of Hydras going down, a couple of Corruptors going down. Quite a poor move. But at the same time, I'm also losing some stuff. Which explains his poor move. He wasn't paying attention where I was paying attention. And I wasn't paying attention where he was paying attention. Now a massive lag spike. Uh-oh. Yes, uh, Cats was lagging up the game a bit. One of the casters. Mm -hmm. Quickly thinking what I want to do is my next move. I lost my topside army, so that sucks. Um, probably want to warp some stuff in over there. And then at the same time, I got to figure out how to defend my fifth. Because I see some units on the minimap in that general area. So I think that's going to be my first course of action. Yeah, it's five Hydras. Two more coming in. So that's seven Hydras here that get killed pretty much for free. I do wonder how much of that is pause influenced. I also saw the Ling run by trying to come in, so I'm just going to temporarily block that. Can't really go into my third base. That noise. That is real noise for me. Fifth base coming up here as well as um, one zealot is still going there. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. It goes indeed. I'm going to keep some units at home here because I want to really rebuild that army. I'm just going to add a gateway so I finally have a quick warp in on my third base, which is where I usually tend to warp anyway. I'm going to try and revelate. Tempest outrange lurkers. And even if they didn't, didn't matter because Tempests are flying. <laughs> what I really mean is that Tempests also are good against spores. They're nice against corruptors, good against vipers. Tempests are just really good to have in this type of scenario. This is a scary spot for me because... I don't have so many units, but he doesn't really have enough Lurkers, so I think it's fine anyway. Um, I'm just kind of pushing out here, and yeah, I'm getting an, a pretty decent trade, honestly. Did lose my gateway that I wanted to use, <laughs> so that's sad. I built a battery in a kind of a random position, but even just one battery can help a lot in a fight. One or two batteries. That's, uh, my oracles need to move in, in the right spot. Do I have the anti-building uh, stuff? No, I don't. I wish I did. Boy, do I wish I did. Because then you're shooting these buildings so freaking fast. Single volleys all the time, baby. So I'm moving in towards the sixth base. One of the most important things in this game, in the PvZ matchup, is to try and get um, not just good trades, but also more money. You know, you kind of want the, you want it to work on both sides for you. So you want good trades and you want more money. And if you get both, then you always win. If you get one of them, there's a chance you lose. This was a really good fight for me. I'm surprised how well this went. I think he also was surprised how well this went for me. It's like, man. I guess I had a pretty decent setup there with the battery, with the cannons, with a decent immortal count as well. So I guess it shouldn't be so surprising if I get a snipe on the investor. No, I don't. Not really, at least. Not really a snipe. More like a slow death. Okay, now I have the anti-building stuff. And you'll see how quickly I, I kill things if I try to shoot it. Look at that. Pop. Right out disappearing. As I'm trying to hit this base, uh, I'm just gonna need to move back home, honestly. Cause I didn't realize there was gonna be lurkers there. That sucks. That really does suck. Don't have a huge army on the left side, but I think the army might just be big enough. I have a bunch of Templars here with my main. My new Oracle just popped out as well. That allows me to really start dealing some damage. I use an observer on the left side to kind of figure out where he's coming from with the corruptors. I also take uh, the middle tower and I send zealots into his main. This is just a distraction. is so that there, there can't be a left side army. And if there is, then I can deal some damage. Now I pull back because I saw his lurkers move. So my zealots are actually going back home to go die over there. Uh, as I'm still trying to clear this base, I killed his right side base as well. There's a lot of freaking uh, lurkers right now in my main, which is actually a pretty serious issue. I'm going to need to um, yeah, do something about that if I, I want to win this game. I got a couple of decent storms off. Not quite pushing through yet. So now I see he's in the main and he's starting to fight my production. I'm like, wait, this sucks, man. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to send these Tempest back home. I keep my Zealot Immortal... Uh, Archon army downstairs so I can catch him and he can't escape 
And that works like a freaking charm. And I don't have to move in here and just move back. And this is a huge move because he loses like 9, 10 lurkers here. I can just reset up a bunch of my cannons, rebuild this. And I can move my Tempest back to my main army as well. Um, and that will... Yeah, that's just great. This was a great overall trade. I hardly lost any supply. He lost a lot of supply. He isn't mining anything that belongs to me quite yet. I'm gonna just add a couple more cannons as well. Probably wanna start moving towards the left here. While continuously expanding as well. So I now have this base. I see that his uh, yeah his corruptors here are trying to move in. But I'm like, wait a second. It's cute with the corruptors. But that means that there's nothing here to defend. So I'm just moving in at this point with my Tempest. And I'm taking stuff out. I didn't realize there was more lurkers behind there. That actually cost me quite a bit. I thought I had full vision of that. But I guess I didn't. Um, that was pretty sloppy. Because I lost a lot of freaking Templar there. But at the same time, it feels like doesn't really matter that much because I have a huge army on both sides and he doesn't have an answer for my Tempest at all at least so far he hasn't if I take out the left side top base and I'm mining this bottom side and he's not mining his own bottom side he's actually in a bit of trouble eventually I'm gonna move towards the left but that time is not yet uh, so I do get a lot of kills here lose an immortal and my zealots now um, also I think dying as we can see on the mini map kind of sloppy honestly I mean, what did I kill? Like another extractor and I lost like 8-9 Zelda. There's really no point in doing that. But I think this could have been a good fight. Oh, here. Ah, oh, I sniped the Overseer. God, I'm a genius. I was going to say, this could have been a good fight had I just cloaked and killed the Overseer. And that's what I actually do. I love it when I surprise myself with good moves. Which very often is quite surprising. Um, I'm just going to rotate kind of towards the left side here. I wouldn't mind that. Try and clear that base. Still have these zealots alive, just gonna go back in. We have the observer. We also have the oracle, so we can always can throw a little revelation on that. But he's moving into a funky position here. Because this really exposes him quite a bit. Like he needs to kill things right now. Oh, he's trying to move in. At the same time, he needs to be so freaking careful. I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but it's not looking great. So that base has too many cannons. He needs a lot of lurkers to deal with that. And if he sends a lot of lurkers there, he doesn't have enough lurkers in the middle, you know? So it's a... It's not, yeah, it's a win-win for me, really. Which is exactly what I want in life. Pure win -win. So I'm gonna lose the base that I was taking, that belongs to him. As I clear a lot of his corruptors here. And this is a big move. Um, as in a bad move. Losing a lot of corruptors. It means that these Tempests now have a, a bunch more freedom. And I'm just kind of keep pushing in as well. Like, what the hell? You have a lot of random lurkers spread out over here, buddy. What's picking up with that? So many zealots still in my comp, though, which is actually kind of frustrating to me. He's trying to uh, attack me once again with lurkers from the side, but I'm not so afraid of that, to be honest. As here we go. He's gonna go in. Maybe you should throw down a time bar. Just like that. There's still a, an overseer in the back, so he does have vision of this. Two or um, immortals as well on the far left, not, you know invited into the battle as he goes into my main once more and i'm like wait a second i think i recall how this went last time can i just recall this and be fine <laughs> and the answer is yeah i actually can i can just recall that and be fine so doesn't seem to have any units there i'm just gonna send some of these zealots over he's going in with a lurker harass on my right side and i can deal with that with my main army uh, don't quite have an observer yet but now that it's done i can clear those out the big time warp. Fat storm as well. Sell it harass on the entire left side. Um, at this point he's just bleeding out. And I have so much money still. Right? I have so much cash in the bank. My army is huge. Gotta make sure to not lose probes in a stupid way. And uh, yeah. Clear it all up. And pretty much win the game here I think. Because I'm up in bases right now or at least I'm up in mining by a pretty serious amount. He's building Hydras which is never a good look. And he calls out the GG as I win. And uh, woohoo. Nice. I'm 2-0. One more win and I'm out. That's it. Next win was going to be kind of difficult though as my next opponent is Rainer. Now Rainer currently is residing in Korea, and as this is a European-based tournament, that means that he will be playing with a very high amount of ping. If both players are equally skilled, I'd say that the, the win chance for me would go up significantly. 
I do, however, believe that Rainer is slightly better. So despite this pretty big advantage that I'm getting here, just due to the ping, um, I don't actually feel that comfortable. I've also, since the Lambo series, have played a lot with Lambo before the Rainer games, and Lambo has been absolutely destroying me. So I think we might have played 25 or 30 games. I think I won three or four of them. Um, I, my confidence, especially in the adept movement, is at an all-time low at this point. I'm not feeling good about any of my build orders. I'm kind of in a transitionary period here between different types of builds. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. Do I want to stick with the old that I don't think is good anymore? Or do I want to go to the new, which I think is better? Or, uh, but, but I'm not good with it yet. So I'm kind of in this awkward position where I just don't feel so comfortable in this matchup, despite still feeling comfortable in the later stages of the game. However, I do know that my opponent most likely is not going to let it go to the later stages of the game for two reasons. One, I think that is a decent stage for Rainer to lose at against me, like that could definitely happen. And two, he's playing with a lot of ping, which makes it much harder to control late game armies. I'm fully expecting Rainer here to go for a, a couple of quick all-ins, and that's kind of what I've mentally prepared for as well. As I open up with a block on my opponent's natural and just going for a little bit of harassment here on the drones as well. Uh, just trying my best, making sure that uh, he can't mine as much. And you can really see the ping shine through here. He's struggling with getting any mining done uh, on the patch that I'm harassing at. I'm just making sure nothing weird is happening. I want to check as well to make sure that he's not mining any mineral patches here. Um, and then go for some type of link flood. Don't forget that on the left side of this base is a lot of space as well as a mineral wall. Uh, where he can go in. So I see these drones rotate over. One of them steals some gas in its mouth. I'm like, okay, this looks fairly standard for me. Nothing weird going on. So probably just want to go back upstairs here and figure out what's kicking off. Yeah, I'm just going to poke in to see if any of these mineral patches have been mined. I think I even click it. Yeah, I click one of them at least. See, okay, nothing has been mined. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Just going to send this adept across the map. See if I can get a little bit of harassment going. And if I can, that's great. If I can't, well... Tough luck. Um, I feel like as long as I'm defending, as long as I'm not dying, I'm going to be in a pretty decent spot. I'm just kind of shading around. Boom, be -dum, be -dum. I don't think I should finish this, right? No, that'd be pretty crazy. There's freaking six links out already, um, as well as a queen. So I don't feel the necessity here really to finish anything. Um, I'm going to start my oracle up as well. And I'm just going to get my pilot. So now I'm moving into positions with my adepts to kind of figure out uh, kind of what to do. It's like, do I want to cancel this shade? Do I want to finish it? I do think I cancel this, which is obviously the correct call. And I'm just going to go back home with these two adepts as well. And with these two adepts uh, and an oracle out, I feel comfortable enough to try and take a third base. The oracle now starts moving out. Pilot. Second Oracle as well. And I really want to get my Nexus up. So we get our Nexus up. And just as I put my Nexus down, he comes in with a, well, a bunch of these guys. Not paying attention to my Oracle as a result. I still get two kills, which is nice. Happy with that. That's exactly what you want when you fly in. Two kills is really the maximum amount. I go for a quick Twilight Council to try and go into a quick Blink here as well behind all of this. So I'm just adding in two more Gateways. I'm trying to get some information here as well as some damage in. If I can, of course, that is. I see no workers here whatsoever. A little bit suspicious, but at the same time, my adepts actually are out of position. And more and more links are now moving across the map. So I'm going to need to actually recall these uh, oracles if I want something good to be done. And I am recalling them, but they recall to the base which had, which had energy, which ends up being my main base. I lose about four adepts total so far. My fifth adept is about to go down. Or maybe that was my fourth adept that was about to go down. It does end up staying alive, but I'm supply blocked. I don't have any battery over at my third base. I'm in a bit of a panic mode here, and I still haven't seen Marsh out of my opponent. On top of that, I also used my... Um, what do you call it? My recall. Which also not optimal. I see more links still streaming in forward. I get a couple of stalkers here. Uh, yeah, I'm just not really feeling comfortable. I activate another pulsar beam. I'm like, okay, I managed to push this away. And I'm kind of starting to set up again. Yeah, a cheeky little chrono in here. A couple more stalkers. See more links. I'm like, wait, this is so weird. I'm just going to have to go back home. Uh, it might be like a Link Bane attack. 
uh, I'm completely unaware of what's happening in the dead space in my natural, uh, which is where I would usually put a pylon at this point, but I didn't. And now I hear the Nidus noise, and I'm like, uh-oh, I know what this is. I definitely do know what this is. That's, uh, <laughs> Rainer is knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Uh, if, if my base is heaven, that is. And he gets in as well. I actually let a lot of links in from the side on top of that, which is a huge blunder. I pull all the probes from the main base, hold position on all of them. Uh, my battery probably is not going to be finishing up over here in my natural, uh, sadly. Trying to move these probes in a way so that my units stay alive, but honestly, no point. There's so many queens here. The creep is about to catch up as well, and then he can start using transfusions. More and more links streaming across the map. I'm losing everything in my main, my production, uh, my tech, and most likely also my nexus, and just don't have that many workers remaining. This battery also ends up falling, as uh, we see him uh, yeah, having a couple of links still at my third base. And I feel very stupid right now. At least I finished Blink, but there's no point. And, uh, the only thing that there's left for me to do here is to leave this game, which is uh, what I'm hopefully about to do in a second or so. Yep, there we go. I'm not very happy with it at all, because this was very preventable as a loss. And, uh, yeah. Zero one. Second game on Oceanborn, where my plan once again is just to survive, not die, stay safe. And I think I knew that he was gonna cheese. I like I, I had in the back of my mind, but I thought it was gonna be more sophisticated cheeses, if that makes sense. Rainer is kind of a sophisticated guy usually. You know, he he doesn't just throw random stuff your way. And this kind of felt like random stuff. I was surprised by that. So I had a small change of, you know, uh, of, of, of mindset of, of how I needed to approach the series. It's like, okay, just need to switch it up a little bit. <coughs> as uh, I go for, once again, a quick block on my opponent's natural. <laughs> I see him hanging around with the drones. Like, what the hell is this guy up to? <laughs> what was he angling for, you know? Was he hoping I was going to go upstairs so he can get the hatchery in the natural? I think that's what he was hoping, but... No shot, buddy. So I just check for the third base real fast. And I see that, uh, indeed, he is getting a, a natural over on the third base location. I continue with my life. <laughs> I think this has to be one of the most satisfying feelings when you see an idiot like that. Just kind of poke his uh, nasty little head in there with the drones. Like, you're just popping in. Hey, what's up, guys? And I piss off, mate. Back to building hatcheries where you belong. Over on, the third, over on the third base. Sometimes they also hide it on top of the ramp. And then when you go scout the third base, they move down the ramp. <laughs> ah, that type of stuff is so funny. I love these little dances. I've seen Dark ones do that and Hero just stayed downstairs. So Dark wasn't mining with like two workers for 15, 20 seconds. <laughs> I think Hero was just patrolling his worker while changing the music on Spotify. <laughs> oh, freaking Zerg, man. God, I hate them. More than all of them. Every last one. Not a single nice one. Um, <clears throat> as I'm continuing my uh, harass, scratching my head like the proper chimp I am. And uh, seeing this pool finish. I mean, there's really nothing going on in the early game. Just hanging around, really. Having a good old time. I want to get a couple of adepts out. And then just kind of uh, get a stargate. Get some control of the game. All that good jazz. You know, just generally be a, be a happy person. That's what I want to be here. That's what I want to be. That's, uh, I'm scouting, seeing, hey, what are your what are your links doing over here? I want to make sure that he can't run by links and go for like some type of like drone pool as well with it. Like some link drone uh, all in. So I always really check very thoroughly these days with my probe. I think it's good to do. That's very, very important. Like one lane is covered by the probe, the other lane is covered by the adept. I think it's so valuable, honestly. Uh, getting another chrono boost here on my nexus. Also very valuable. Extra probes. Love to see it. Did I finish this? Oh, of course I did. God, I'm such a genius. I, sometimes I'm really happy with my own decisions in game. You know, in these types of key moments. Yeah, that was a good decision. Here you see the ping. <laughs> There's no shot he loses that in a normal game. <laughs> There's a freaking drone to an adapt. <laughs> ah, the yellow seems like 300 ping, mate. <laughs> nice try. That type of stuff feels real good to get. As uh, second gate goes down as well. I see he went for three bases. Nothing too weird, so I'm expecting once again a lair attack. Like a lair based attack at least. Lair? 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 Like that. Or like a later uh, roach, roach queen all in, something like that. Also, of course, completely uh, valid. It's not necessarily bad. I'm just trying to get my nexus up here. I'm a, I'm a good boy. 
I was trying to get a quick nexus. Is that a crime? Is that a crime? No, it's not a crime, but it could have been a crime. Let's get a kill. And now my nexus goes up. Should really tuck my adapts in a little bit better than I did last time. <clears throat> and now I want to get... Uh, I actually can't quite recall what my plan was here. Do I go triple oracle? I think I went triple oracle. So this is kind of what I've been practicing. Just triple oracle style with uh, a higher adept count and then trying to gain some more control. It's a lot more harass focused and I'm not very good at the harassing part, which is why I felt a little bit uncomfortable playing this. Um, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying my best, all right? If you see me getting zero kills and you know why as well. I have the two of that to get another gateway as well. Uh, he's, he's just really good with the queen movement. And I'm not so good with the oracle movement. I'm not so fast, all right? My brain works fast, but the hands, they, they often don't follow. The hands often don't follow, let me tell you. So I'm just sending out these four adepts on the map. I'm, I'm having a good old time, you know? Trying my best. Seeing what's kicking off over here. Uh, see if we can three queens. What the hell is this guy up to, huh? It's kind of messed up, mate. It's kind of messed up. What's wrong with you? I just uh, revelate. Like, all right, you you want to be a little prick? You can be a little prick. See a couple of these uh, <laughs> these little bad boys coming in. <laughs> I have a, it's an interesting recall. I lose a bunch of workers. I feel really stupid about it as well. I think I lose like two, three workers. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. As um, yeah, I'm just... I still have all my oracles are alive, which is nice. This wasn't too hot, but it wasn't really wasn't the end of the world. Uh, I'm just gonna go for some more harassment, and I want to keep my oracle near my uh, main army, so that if he shows up with a bunch of links for whatever stupid reason, I can actually, you know, defend a little bit. Once again, I have no recall available, and oh my god, he has a bunch of links for no real reason. Uh, I also noticed that there are no queens, so I immediately know what's going on. I'm like, okay, this is dumb. I tried to recall here, then I realized I had no recall, and I lose every single unit. I'm a little bit upset right now because this is this is actually brain damage inducing this type of stuff happens too many times and you actually get some serious pain now i see some pain links as well being added into the mix i'm starting to feel real bad about myself at this point I'm trying my best to get a little block in here as well tiny little sentry full wall in the natural another oracle too I'm trying to get the full wall up it's not entirely working have one more sentry warping in and I also get another stalker which was actually a mistake I regretted that instantly I really wanted more sentries to be honest as I get the uh what do you call it the super battery going I got another battery here on the bottom side I feel pretty comfortable in this spot to be honest I don't feel bad at all so I let a couple of banes in just for the sake of letting some banes in it's always good to uh to do that yeah, so you can try and attack your stalkers bust them early I'm gonna lose this nexus. It's very important that I don't lose any of the probes. And if that's the case, I'm kind of fine. I'm getting massively supply blocks because I just lost the nexus as well as like three pylons at the same time. So not in a great spot. Some of my pylons have just finished up from the extra ones. I'm just blinking my dudes back home. And all I want to do right now is uh, expand as quickly as possible again and clean this up. If I can clean up this mess, that would be great. I can actually end up losing my oracles here like a complete clown. That would be really tense. I uh, lose one, which honestly is pretty dense by itself. Uh, I'm gonna clean this up eventually, no reason to lose these very expensive oracles. Because yeah, they're very expensive. Uh, I'm transitioning into charge, Templar archives, I have an extremely high worker count. I do believe I have plus one already as well. Uh, you can see that when you select the probe, because probes don't get attack damage upgrades. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait and see, I, th I think I have, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Just shot my own stalker. And now I want to scout to see what he's up to. And I'm seeing, honestly, not that many workers. I see no gases. So then my next step is going to be to check whether he has a fort base or not. If he doesn't have a fort base, I'm actually kind of okay with my position. Or if he doesn't have a saturated fort base. He's going to take out this little cybernetic squad. Well, this little cybernetic squad, this big cybernetic squad. He hardly has any workers there. So I'm actually feeling quite good about myself here. I'm like, okay, I have good infrastructure. I probably have better upgrades than my opponent. Uh, and I have a really nice worker count. His creep threat isn't brilliant either. Like, no fort base. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, this could actually be quite good for me. And I know Rainer, so I'm expecting him to go for like ring, Ling run buys and stuff. So I'm just kind of running around trying to catch the Ling run buys. And I want to figure out what his next step is going to be. I maybe should have blinked forward a bit faster, but I think I was afraid. Which makes sense, you know, it makes sense to be scared. 
when you've been called out by mass links a couple of times. I catch these links, which is really nice. Once again, quite a bit of damage here being dealt. Maybe try and saturate these gas a bit quicker. Not sure what the follow-up is going to be. Uh, out of my opponent, of course. Hard to figure out. I'm going for an attack, which I'm not entirely sure about how brilliant that is. From the perspective I'm, I'm seeing now, like, do I really want to attack a guy that just barely has a fourth base? Like, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> do, do I? <laughs> I have to morph another arc I don't have a battery here. I'm afraid of losing stuff. So now I see Hydra, I'm like, ooh. That kind of sucks. I don't know if I started my charge yet. I do have plus two down. Oh, sorry, my charge, my my storm. Yeah, so I start my storm now. I'm like, ooh, it's a little bit late. I feel like that's a trend, is starting my storm mode. I really felt like I, I, I haven't been playing so well yet in the... But maybe whenever you're watching yourself play, you always feel like you're a bit bad. It's very confronting, watching yourself in first person. Like in replays, you can kind of speed over it, but here you see what you're seeing and the things you're doing and the things you're not doing. Yeah, it can be kind of painful, honestly. I'm not a huge fan of it. Watching myself play in first person. You see all your own mistakes. I hate seeing my mistakes. I always do four times in the replay and pretend I played perfect and blame my losses on imbalance. But this is, you know, we <laughs> gotta take on our uh, <laughs> our mistakes here head on. Oh, I was trying to go in. See, I should have probably blinked in there. But I was uh, actually, I remember, I was afraid that the Hydra Link Bane army was gonna come from there for some reason. I was like, what if we took down the rocks and I didn't notice? Because I had vision everywhere else, but there. I actually remember making that decision. Here I send in a prism into five Hydras and lose it. Nice. Memory of a freaking elephant. I remember every prism I lose, and trust me, there's a lot of prisms that I lose, so it's impressive. <clears throat> I think my uh, storm at this point is almost done. That means I can start storming stuff. Okay, two more storms. I think I'm lacking energy on these two forward ones. Not quite enough energy. I'm just kind of uh, figuring out where he's going. Keep my, uh, my zealots a little bit to the side. I'm doing a good job at that. Nice storms as well. One more good storm. Super battery activated. My upgrades are just really good. So this fight is a complete wash. Managed to win the game. I still feel dumb because I almost lost. But at least I managed to tie up the series for now. The final game of this series is played on El Sioni, which features a gold base, which can be taken early on. Now, there are two ways to deal with this gold base. The, the first way is to accept that the Zerg will take it, and the second way is to accept the Zerg will take it. There's really nothing you can do about it. This gold base is a... it's just what happens on this map, okay? You, you, can't, you can't deal with it. It's there, okay? That's life. So I, I decided to deal with it. Um, sometimes Zergs take it, sometimes they don't. I do, however, have a build prepared for it, and I've been practicing this build. It's a four-gate glaive into a f relatively fast third nexus into a robotics facility. And the reason why I think this build is quite good against the gold in particular is because you can shade. You walk into the third base and you shade towards the natural and then the links need to chase you. And while the links chase you, four more adept show up at their gold base. So A, you're fighting versus low queen counts. Not all queens are together ever because they can't be at the gold base. And B, the links have to chase adepts. And C, adepts show up at the third. So if executed well, I think this build is extremely powerful. Now, um, how does it start? I open up with a no scout here uh, because I like having money. I don't like being poor in this game. So I get my nexus at 19 supply and get a core at 19 as well. There's one supply earlier than you usually see. The reason I do this is so that I can get slightly faster warp gate as well. So my push is going to just hit a little bit harder. Usually this, this cybernetic score would maybe go down at 1 minute and 31 seconds. Now it went down at like 128. It's a 3 second difference, but 3 seconds is 3 seconds. As uh, I'm scratching my nose, taking the watchtower, and then going for a scout on the, on the gold base. It's important to know what you're up against. I'm not playing against a gold base. Maybe I want to do something else, but probably not. I had this strategy planned anyway, so I was going to go for it. I'm like, okay, you know, I've, I've got all my information. Let me just try to deny a little bit of mining over here. So I decide to do that. I have an itchy nose. I wonder why I can remember that. And here I make a big mistake. I forget my warp gate for about three seconds, which <laughs> was the entire point of the build. <laughs> <It was laughs> to uh, get the warp gate in time. So I'm feeling... A little bit stupid right now. Um, 
That's all I need to add. Uh, it's also a very specific build that I'm playing, by the way. It's like, there's a lot of probe cuts in there. There's a lot of like tiny little timings where you don't have a, you know, a very big window to throw down a structure. So I'm double chronoing my probes, but I'm still going for a big cut because I need like the 20 or 30 extra minerals that these uh, these quick probes provide me. I managed to snipe one link, which I'm real happy about. So I throw down a gateway here, and I'm gonna come from. Uh, an alternative side over here. My probe also decides to move across the map. And I'm like, you know what I can do here? I can actually just add two freaking gateways. There we go. So that's what we go for. I'm gonna move in. I'm gonna try to get a kill here on this drone. I don't quite get it. But I do manage to get another kill on a link. So two links for free. I mean, life can be good after all for me. You know, that's... It is what it is. No drones, but two links is basically the same thing. It's one larva, 50 minerals, whatever. So I'm gonna move back with my adapts and I'm gonna get a relatively fast third base over here. Now my opponent hasn't scouted me quite yet. He's gonna wait until my third gateway unit finishes and then he'll send in the Overlord. This is at least the standard approach to scouting in the PVZ matchup. There's going to be a small break after this usually. So usually they send in the Overlord. Now Rainer probably already believes that he knows what he's fighting against. Um, so he doesn't want to go for that scout, I guess. As um, I'm going to get my first four adept warp in here. Outside of uh, range of that Overlord, by the way. I wish I could have warped it in over on my third. That would have been even, be even better for me, I think. Would have been much better for me. So I'm going to move, in the, move them out. Sneak him by that Ovi. Sneak him by that Ovi. I'm going to get my next warp in of... Uh, for adapts and go across the map. All right, and we're ready to go. Finishes at 4.18. This is still relatively quick, by the way. Like This is a very neat timing that I don't think he plays against a whole lot. Like it's, I'm hitting like freaking truck. So my goal here is to fight with my glaive adapts. My glaive hasn't quite finished yet, which is actually frustrating me. And now I shade to the wrong side, and I don't realize either. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> that ain't good. <laughs> Boys, we're in trouble. Because <laughs> they should be in my opponent's natural already, and these links should be freaking gone. That's the entire point of these adapts. Um, now I lost quite a few adapts as well, which really freaking sucks. I'm gonna try shading into his main base. He still doesn't have roaches out, by the way. Imagine how much time I could have fought without roaches being around. He's getting an upgrade here on the Evo chamber, and I'm like, okay, I'm freaking dead. Like, I, I just, I completely ruined it. I mean, I killed quite a few workers. I think I'm up in workers. Um, but I have legit, like, I have no sentry. I have no way of scouting. Uh, I have no units on the map anymore, so I'm just trying to get on the map. Not because I feel like I can deal damage, but because I really need to get some freaking information right here. Uh, and I see roaches moving out. This still is giving me zero clues. I don't know if there's reinforcements or not. So I think... I wonder if I should have finished that to pick off links. But I think not finishing that probably was better. As he's gonna try and get into my natural, and he gets into my natural. When it rains, it pours. And right now it's freaking hailing as well, and there's thunder and there's lightning. And I'm standing under a tree. And life is not good. However, it seems like he's not actually going for an all-in. So I'm starting to, you know, relax a little bit. I'm like, okay, this wasn't an all-in. Yes, my position is really crappy. But at least I'm not being all-in. At least I'm not that quiet. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. And, you know, I start uh, mining out this thing. So I can consider taking a fort base at some point in the near future. I'm probably going to get a forge as well. And then he hits me. He hits me right in the jaw with a beautiful attack here. Um, I use a super battery. He comes in from the side. He hits my sentry as well with those biles, which sucks. Um, there's a lot of links. And the biles are kind of connecting. The battery in the back is doing some serious work. Just don't quite have the production at this point to, to deal with this. He morphs a couple extra ravagers. Get my next immortal out. It's not over yet. Uh, he doesn't have quite enough units. I'm about to lose this boy, bad boy. As my probes are actually dealing quite a bit of damage. Uh, links are not there. Immortal shield coming in clutch as well. I add in another another pylon. Or at least try to add in another pylon. He surrounds uh, one more of my bad boys. One more of my immortals. And I end up losing that. But my next immortal is already on the way out. <coughs> this pylon is banging as well. Absolutely fantastic. As, um, yeah, I'm actually 
kind of feeling like I'm holding. He's going in the wrong direction. His battery is falling lower and lower. The pylon is about to die as well, though. And I'm like, okay, let me rebuild another pylon. Uh, as I pull my probes back at this point. But he also pulls his points back. I got another pylon down, which is good. I notice I have a little bit of gas in the bank. I wonder what I'm going to do with that. Yes, sir. Dark Shrine. Now all of a sudden there's a timer on this push. And there's hope once more. Because once I get one or two DTs out, this game just ends. He doesn't get the run by in my base. I see more Ravagers still on the way. I wish I would have another pylon here instead of another battery being added in. Uh, but that's not quite the case yet. Trying to hold this ramp at least a little bit. And... Honestly, not doing a terrible job at it. I have a super battery available as well, which I can now use. I use it. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> and he throws uh, vials on both my Immortal and my Pylon. Really double hitting there. And uh, yeah, there's really nowhere for my units to move. It just has too much stuff. And I'm very upset. Uh, I was close to smashing my desk. But I didn't because I have great self-control. And with that great self-control... I uh, am now fighting against Kung Fu Banda in the fourth match. I don't think I actually quite explained when you're through, but if you win three matches, um, you're into the next round. So that means you're top 16. This is the round of 32. It's a massive group stage. Basically two, two groups of 16 players each. And uh, you, if you lose three times, you're out. And if you win three times, you're through to the next round. So currently my score is 2-1. I beat both Lambo and what's the third one now, you thermal and then i lost to rainer in a silly way that one doesn't really count now i'm fighting against gong fu banda now gong fu banda is a player that is uh, better than me in the late game usually but much worse than i am in the early stages of the game so my goal when playing against gong fu banda is to get a lead and then to win the game starcraft a lot of the time is about kind of figuring out where it is that you're strong and where your opponent is strong, and then abusing that. So, uh, yeah, usually in, for example, PvZ, I like to go to the late game because I think Pearls is strong there, and I think I'm quite good in the late game. Positionally, I understand what needs to be done. In the PvP late game, I'm not as big a fan. I don't quite understand what needs to be done very often. I think my unit movement is not so good. I'm often too afraid of moving out as well. And I, have, I struggle finding openings. So I like the games to end, uh, but before a minute 15 majority of the time once games go longer than 15 minutes i often lose unless i'm in an extremely good spot then i can sometimes bring it home so my goal here is really to just get a very big lead now how do you get a big lead by playing standard and solid starcraft 2 because everyone and their sister in pvp likes to cheese and do something weird and as a result of that you can actually get very far by just playing solid starcraft in pvp since the newest patch the sentry is a unit that creates quite a few stable scenarios and i feel very comfortable with a lot of these stable scenarios so i'm just going to be opening up with a sentry expand here and i'm going to be putting a pylon on the side to spot for any potential oracles um, it also helps by the way if you always put a pylon inside of your main base on the location where i just put my third pylon that your opponent can never really proxy a pylon in your main base like it's just uh, you don't really have to think about it if you always put it there because you see your entire main base before the probe leaves so yeah that's kind of nice I see an Adept and a Stalker, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, what could this be? And I'm thinking, this feels like a Stargate to me. However, I don't know that it's going to be a Stargate. Like, how can I know? I haven't scouted. I simply, it's impossible for me to figure out whether this is a Stargate or not. So, um, what do I do as a result? Well, honestly, not a whole lot, I, because I don't have confirmation. Just based on an adept and a stalker, you can't really say, oh, this is 100% X or this is 100% Y. I'm just going to be moving forward a little bit. going to send my sentries out. Try and catch this uh, adept. It's always nice to get that first unit. It's my uh, phoenix is moving into the wrong direction right now. Um, getting a slightly later scout than ideally I would have wanted. Especially because I'm opening up with a robotics facility. So I see a battery here. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a twilight council or a robo opener. And then I see this. I see a freaking Stargate, which is extremely surprising to me. This is not common at all. Um, so I get, I cancel my Robo, I get a Twilight Council, and I get an instant third base. So I'm kind of out-greeting my opponent here. I'm like, okay, you're playing like an idiot. Stalker Sentry, adapt into Oracle. That means the Oracle's going to be quite late. It means you have no aggressive uh, presence on the map here whatsoever. I'm just going to try and kill you. And that's... Or sorry, I'm just going to try and out-greet you, and you can't kill me. 
that's basically the entire plan. He has a low gateway unit count. I feel comfortable in my defense against the oracles. Um, I'm a little bit afraid perhaps of the second oracle when that comes in, but not against the one. There, however, doesn't seem to be a second oracle. So, yeah, I'm honestly, I'm feeling very good about myself right now. The only thing I need to keep in mind is the fact that um, that the oracles can fly in at any moment. So I'm trying to find them with this hallucination. Like trying to figure out where's these freaking oracles? Where are they at? Huh? So I'm just kind of scouting around and I see two oracles going towards my main base. I'm like, okay, I thought it was just one, but whatever. I was prepared for this anyway. All good. I'm not upset. You're upset. Just kind of hanging around. I want to get some vision on those two oracles here with my phoenix. Figure out where this clown went. It's so, so important. I'm also desperately trying to chrono my Twilight Council here. And now he starts attacking this. I'm like, okay, interesting, cool. Very funny. Uh -huh. I love it. Um, I don't have to go there, though. I don't have any buildings, really, um, that are in that position. I can actually just let him attack it for a little bit, at least. Don't want it to go down too far, but he doesn't know exactly when my blink is going to finish. When my blink finishes, I'm just going to be absolutely fine here. So I'm adding a, a forge, I'm adding a gateway. I'm not getting a third gas quite yet. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, this is good. He hasn't gotten any kills with his oracles. He hasn't gotten any damage with his push out either. Like, isn't life just good for me right now? And I think the answer here is, yeah, life is pretty freaking good right now. So I see the oracles as well here on the edge. He once again moves in forward. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is getting a little bit crazy now. This actually is getting a little bit crazy. He does move forward though with uh, with an immortal as I activate one of the, the shield on it. Uses the guardian shield. I'm like, okay, this is actually getting a little bit scary because he has quite a few units. I blink forward as I see a stasis ward. I'm trying to kill his crap, and at the same time he's moving in forward. I miss command my stalkers there as well. And as a result, I'm actually gonna lose quite a few units. My force shields, however, are good. Quite a few probes go down. Seven in my main base. I'm trying to chase here, but it isn't quite over yet and then I walk into a stasis that I didn't quite spot and now life is actually feeling pretty bad for me I mean he has what an immortal he has a bunch of units he has two immortals four stalkers still and I'm forced into pulling these uh, these probes out trying to keep my stalkers alive as well as I can but I'm feeling like I'm losing this game I don't know how committed this is out of my opponent pulling my probes away because I see the double oracle coming in I do manage to clear this as the stasis ward runs out but this went extremely poor for me honestly and I, I i don't really know what my position is currently i don't know if i'm ahead i don't know if i'm behind so i feel like that is just kind of the <laughs> the, the feeling i have in most of these games in tournaments it's kind of hard to figure out what your position is majority of the time honestly i really struggle with that when <laughs> once things get chaotic it's so difficult to know hey this is a good spot this is a bad spot like what actually is kicking off here i don't i don't know Robotics facility on the way. I'm afraid of Dark Templar after all. Uh, as uh, I find his uh, oracles, or his oracles find my probe, uh, whichever way you want to say it is uh, correct. I see that he's taking extra gases on this base, which could indicate many things. I kind of want to get one or two extra gases in that case as well. Um, just I don't like being too far behind in gas. That often feels really bad. Being a little bit behind in gas is good because it means you're getting more minerals majority of the time. So I'm trying to figure out, hey, does this guy have a fort base? Um, how many gases? What's his stack? So I'm seeing four gas at least. I want to check in his natural. If it's six gas, most likely that means he's going to be going into a robotics, uh, not a robotics bay, a Templar archives and, uh, and Chartlot Archon. So I really need to get some info on that. I need to figure out like, hey, well, what is it actually that you're doing? Getting extra upgrades as well. I, I'm kind of sad that I haven't checked his gas yet in the natural. That really should have been my priority. Basically the moment this happened. I'm going to start my own prism so I can try and counterattack if he decides to move out. Because I took a pretty fast and greedy gold base as well. As he has a bunch of immortals. I take another gas. I'm like, okay, what the heck is this actually? What actually is this, huh? Mr. Kung Fu Banda. So I'm... Uh, Farming some zealots at home, not entirely sure why. Am I afraid of DTs here? Probably. I see a fort base as well. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. That's real interesting. As I uh, send a fake prism in towards his main base. I send a real prism towards his fort so I can start dealing some damage. Which is always good. And behind this, um, another thing I want to do is actually taking a fifth base. 
because I feel like I have much better mineral eco. I'm ahead, I have map control. There's no reason for me to stay at home and do absolutely nothing. Getting a second forge, some extra gates as well. Here comes the fake prism. I hope he's seen it. So I go in with the fake prism and hope that he responds to it. And I go in here as well with my units. I see an Archon being constructed at this point. I have a lot of gas in the bank. I'm like, wait, I don't actually think I can fight this so well. He has a lot of immortals. His army looks quite scary and he's going to have some batteries as well. I see the Archons, which honestly also scares me. And I decide to get a Robo Bay and second robotics facility so I can transition into disruptors. Or I could also just transition into Colossus. Something uh, people often forget is that the Colossus actually is not that bad in PvP. It might actually be the best out of all matchups in PvP. It's not used a whole lot because I think usually you can't really get there. But I, against high Zealot counts, I think it actually has some real potential. So here he, go, he moves in forward with these uh, Oracles. I blink on top of him. I hope I get some kills. Okay, I get one kill. One Oracle does manage to survive. Oracles are so strong in the mid game as well due to the Stasis Ward. People really underestimate that, I think. Like, the Stasis Ward is such a, a powerful tool that you can use the entire way through. It's much better to just use them defensively for Stasis Ward. Have them at, like, run-by positions. Makes it really difficult to attack majority of the time. Okay, this prison didn't quite get spotted. And I'm just trying to aim for a base trait. I know I have more bases than him, and I can just run around this watchtower the entire time. And the moment I get my disruptors out, I'm going to be pretty freaking happy. And he's probably going to be quite sad. So I'm just kind of roaming around. I also have this prism, which is putting some pressure on him, you know. It's like saying, hey, if you're going to move out, the prism might go into your main. This army might attack you as well. And he's still trying to, to probably kill me, you know. Like he's, 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 he's running around the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree being the Selnaga Watchtower. And I want that Watchtower too. So we both kind of pull back. I now have uh, a cannon wall going up. More disruptors on the way. Lose that observer, which sucks because that gives him some vision of potentially what units I'm building. Like this disruptor should come as a surprise, and it it doesn't that much anymore, especially now that he gets the watchtower again. I think. No, he doesn't. Okay, and here we go. Gonna start moving in forward. He does have a a stalker count as well. This is a terrible fight. Gonna end up hitting two zealots there. I mean it's four supply, but it's not quite what I wanted. Stasis where it does hit big on my zealots. Which is very frustrating for me. Lose my sentries on top of that. But my disruptor count is growing. This is such an uncomfortable situation. And this is a hard map to multitask on. Because there's really not that many attack paths. I see him taking his fifth as well. So I kind of make like a mental nose. Okay, I maybe want to do something about that fifth base. As um, I see him moving towards his own third. I rotate towards the uh, top side a little bit. With a flanking motion, if anything. I see him trying to take out those rocks. Purification Nova hits one zealot there. I turn around. Another uh, kind of a zoning disruption shot. And I recall my disruptors instantly. Just gonna try and shoot these uh, Archons. I targeted the Prism instead of the Archons. And he picked up both of the Archons. So I killed two Archons there. And I managed to get away. So that feels very good for me. My plan right now is just to expand the entire right side. While trying to clear stuff on the other sides. I basically just want to... I, I want to kill things. I want to kill bases. I want to have better eco, which is something I already have. I want to have better upgrades. And I want to get disruptors against this massive army. That's really my plan. I want to get a high disruptor count. And I probably do need to split off some army in order to play this uh, style. I see him taking out these rocks, which I think is a very good call for him. So if he gets these rocks down, then uh, it makes it harder for me to rotate. It makes it much easier for him to defend. He's going to be the defender. I'm going to be the attacker. He's creating a better army. I'm creating a more mobile army that wants to trade with, with buildings. It wants to take out probes and wants to delete your eco. So now he's building some uh, phoenixes. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Are there any stasis wards here? It doesn't quite seem to be the case. I'm trying to hit a purification of I'm not really hitting it. I have bad vision, no real observers. I'm trying to get them now. It's the disadvantage of getting uh, disruptors is that all of your robo time is kind of tied up into these bad boys. Going to get observer speed as well, as well as a dark shrine. More cannons here on the bottom side. And I decide to take his base as my seventh. Because if we're ever going to go base straight, it's always nice to have a base on the other side. And also, if he wants to kill that base, he's going to expose the top side. So it's basically bait. I'm not going to mind so much from it. I mean, if I will, that's great for me. I just mind one of his bases. And if I won't, and he, you know, it, it does the job of baiting him in, then that's also great for me. I'm just moving here towards the far left right now. I don't have enough stalkers to feel safe. 
So I'm just going to move back a little bit. I think my zealot count in general is way too high um, in the current situation. I was way too aggressive with building zealots. Should have been way more stalkers. Stalkers are very good in high numbers. The zealots actually kind of suck in high numbers. Zealots are good in lower numbers or when they have high numbers and the other guy has no numbers. Like the zealot is like a finishing unit. So once you've cleared stuff. Once no one is shooting the zealot, the zealot is very good. I want to get my uh, map control back. He's going to be playing Phoenix, Chartlot, Archon, Immortal, kind of. And I'm going to go for Stalker Disruptor. Um, expanding very quickly. Trying to take map control. Trying to deny some of my opponent's bases. And I need to get rid of my zealots as well. These games are very weird, and I feel like the, the Phoenix Immortal Archon style is kind of underexplored anyway. My Disruptors are staying far back. The main reason as to why my Disruptors are staying far back is because I'm afraid. This was a terrible blink, by the way. Absolutely god-awful. I end up losing about 24 supply of Stalkers, and I end up losing some more Zealots up top as well. This was one of the worst fights I could have gotten. I, I lose so much supply there for no reason, just because of that terrible, terrible blink. Really garbage deer blink. So sad about that. But my production is very good. My eco is still very good. It's not actually the end of the world. He's going to try moving him forward. I'm trying to get some big hits here with my disruptors. Not quite working out. I'm building more zealots, which, quite frankly, pretty disappointing. I think that should have been uh, more stalkers, to be quite honest. I think stalkers are actually much better to get. He has carriers as well, which surprises me here. I'm like, wow, that's pretty fast. I'm not super happy with that. I tried to kill one more, don't quite get it. This is a really uncomfortable situation. I'm nowhere near maxed. I think I just lost a bunch of extra zealots as well. And uh, I feel like I'm losing pretty hard at this point. I'm actually kind of dead, to be honest. My disruptor count isn't very high, my stalker count is tiny. I have no map control anymore, I can't base trade. Or at least it's gonna be difficult for me to base trade. The only thing I have are a lot of cannons. And I'm not sure if that's quite gonna do the trick. Actually, no, that that's not quite gonna do the trick. I managed to wall him in here. I do get the kill on that DT. And here I get a couple of big shots with my disruptors. He's not quite paying attention. As I yeah, get quite a few shots off. Uh, Phoenix is not daring to go in quite yet. I'm going to try to hit the top side as well at the same time. Going to take his gold base. He's really quite pushing it, I think. More stalkers. I'm running out of cash as well, so he already has this base. He also spotted my probe, I think, as a result of me trying to build a base there. Uh, this, this is obviously not going to work. I'm not sure why I continue with that. This attack also is not going to work, though. I have a super battery and freaking 3-4 cannons ability to warp in. So this seems like a, a bit of a mistake. He's building a lot of cannons as this base is extremely important to him. He's going to recall here as well, which is understandable. I'm going to end up killing a lot of cannons. As he moves in forward with some of these phoenixes, I think that does allow me to snipe one or two. Yeah, maybe even three. Yeah, I think I end up getting three phoenixes there, which is great. And this fight is also going relatively well for me. I think the help of these, uh, of these cannons is massive. I'm trying to rotate some of my uh, disruptors towards the top side of the map, which would be uh, wonderful for me, obviously. I need to move this back, back into cannon range. Let's see if I can fight. I actually think I might be capable of fighting if I have all my disruptors here, but currently I have almost none of my disruptors here. They're about to move in, though. They're still doing a good job on this side as well, not really losing much. I actually think I should have attacked here into this base. I don't think he had so many units on that side. He was completely split between the bases. It's pretty much what I wanted. Instead, I go rotate towards this. I don't mind this either. I think both calls are actually okay-ish. Um, so there's quite a few units here. The only problem I kind of have with this move is that if he rotates properly defensively, I might actually be in some trouble. So I end up sniping these bad boys. Yeah, now now it's actually a good setup for him, I think, which I don't super like. Gonna once again try to rotate towards the top side. It's really difficult for him to do this. I keep my disruptors a little bit closer to home, and I think he's attacking this base right now, yeah. That's frustrating for me, but at the same time... It does allow me a lot of freedom. I know he doesn't have a recall available currently. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. You don't have a recall. I have a lot of time. I have a bunch of disruptors. Some freaking DTs as well. 
It's going to try to escape with these bad boys. And uh, I'm just going to warp in more and more zealots. Disruptors on the right side. So if he tries to base trade, I have way more bases. And also I have better defense in the disruptors, right? Disruptors can be so powerful defensively. This must be really frustrating for him to deal with. I'll try and kill this, uh, this thing as well. Not sure if that actually ends up working. I wish I would look at it, but I don't think I will. So here come a couple of big shots as uh, Immortals, Archons, everything's gonna go down. <laughs> a lot of freaking Immortals falling. My Disruptor count's still relatively decent as well. I'm gonna go for another kill here. I think my DTs at his gold have somewhat died, but I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure about it. Yeah, I think they have died. I'm gonna warp in some more. I'm gonna move back a bit as well as I start expanding towards the top side. My bank is still massive. And he is losing bases at a rapid pace. I'm also not having that much mining anymore. I'm still mining from the kind of like four o'clock or so. I'm mining from my gold. And I'm trying to mine from the top base as well. Um, but this position actually makes it hard for me to multitask. Because he doesn't have so many bases anymore. Like him just being on a very low base count might actually be good for him. Because it makes it so hard for me to kill him. Like he just takes the entire right side and then creeps there. Makes life quite hard. I think at this point it would be perfect for me to try and transition into something else because he's building a like a like a master army and at this point I am out mining him and I know I'm going to be out mining him for like the next 10 minutes basically because there's nothing he can do about that. There's a, like he can't he can't fight for map control once you have a carrier army. Like you're just going to get base traded. So you're going to be playing very compact StarCraft. And that should be my cue here to start transitioning at least into a mothership, maybe into Tempest. Uh, maybe into my own carriers. Uh, but instead what I decide to do is continue with kind of a, a high trading style. Which is much more fun to play. Um, but also has potentially very bad effects of getting god awful trades the entire time. This Phoenix is putting in quite some work. He has a mothership right now. Which is frustrating to me. Just gotta make sure that he's not gonna take any of these uh, top side bases. Cannon, cannon, battery. Another base for me. I'm just kind of hanging out. I like hanging out. Hanging out is good for the soul. I see this Archons trying to morph. I put two Disruptors on it. Poof, poof. They die. 600 cast down the drain. Nice try, buddy. Same time I blink in forward. Take out one of these. I'm gonna lose a bunch of Disruptors. I don't mind that. Because at this point, I don't think the Disruptors are so uh, valuable anymore. I actually probably want to get rid of all of them at this point, or at least majority, and just play pure Stalker. If I want to play a high trading style, it needs to be with pure Stalker almost, I think. Going to kill this as well. Going to try taking out these Zealots. The problem with a high trading style is that it's just not viable against what my opponent has. So I, I think I'm playing a style here, that, or I'm transitioning into a style that doesn't make any sense, given the situation. I think the only thing that makes any sense is going into Tempest, really. I wish I was doing that right now. Instead, I'm just warping more gateway units. <laughs> I wonder how long this will last. <laughs> this is actually a really bad call. It's so difficult, though, in the game to think clearly when you're playing. Especially because I don't play a whole lot of games like this, to be honest, as well. Like, it's, it's not common for me to be stuck in these scenarios. Especially against, like, the Phoenix Archon composition. Um, I, I really don't don't play much against that at all. I uh, actually never play against that, to be honest. So yeah, it is completely new. I'm throwing a lot of resources at the pro at the at the problem here as well. So I see some DTs are on the top side. That's uh, just gonna be moving around a little bit. One of my DTs is bugged, by the way. See if I select it, there's like a blue thing around it. It really bothered me when I was playing. I remember. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, this is so annoying. <laughs> I wish I never was born, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't that bad. But it bothered me. It like a weird, weird, weird border around it. Pissing me off. Killing a lot of workers here. And I remember thinking at this point, I wonder if killing more workers is actually good or if it just makes his army bigger. Because, like, let's face it. Like, his army is huge. If he maxes out, like, 200 supply of this crap. And, I, and here I started thinking to myself, like, man, his army is, is so big. And I don't... I don't really have anything, like I can't do anything against it, like what do I do? And I really, I, I, I just had no clue. I was just sitting there like, man, I wonder if I could make the same units. And I'm like, yeah, I could. <laughs> so I could turn on a Stargate to start my uh, air weapons upgrade. My air weapons upgrade should have been going on for 
minutes already, tens of minutes almost. I mean, the fact that that's not going yet is such a huge blunder on my part. It really is. It's silly. It doesn't make any sense at all. I, I should be ready to make that transition at any point. And I do end up blinking him forward, get a kill there on Observer, take this base house once more. As I get a couple of cannons, batteries, another cannon. Uh, he's, he's really just mining from a base and a half. I'm mining from like three bases at this point. So I'm out mining him, I know that. I'm gonna take another base, one of his once more. Uh, this bottom base of mine is quite vulnerable, but I'm okay with that. I can always transition to the top or move towards the top. And now something difficult will need to happen. I will need to start losing units kind of slowly. Um, or not slowly, but at a, a moderate pace, basically. And so that I can transition into carriers. So th that really is my goal here. Um, although I'm still rebuilding. I guess my fleet beacon isn't done yet, so the transition doesn't make any sense. Do I have 11 Nexi right now? Like, no. Okay, there's some, uh, there's Forge in there. So I have eight Nexi, actually, and two Forges and a Dark Shrine for some reason. So he's going to try to maybe counterattack. I'm also going to try to counterattack. Here I'm baiting him. Look at this. I'm attacking with five Stalkers. I'm like, come in with those Phoenixes, my dear friend. Then, poof! Crap! I killed one. Uh, worth it. I mean, it actually was worth it. That's good. Okay, even if you just kill one, man, that's cool. We're in a situation where he probably hardly has any eco. So I see more DTs on the top. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let's see what we can do about that. His army is so big here. Like, it's so big. It's actually crazy. Oh, this just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I blink him forward and I get one snipe and then I need to piss off real fast. I lose some units so I can start my next, my next set of crap. And he's just picking up so many with the phoenixes as well, which is scaring the crap out of me. And I'm just sitting here like, oh no, I need to build more stalkers just to survive. And that's the one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to build stalkers. I want to build carriers. I'm just going to move down here right now. This is a, a scouting stalker. <laughs> this is, he's trying to figure out what's kicking off. Uh, he's here with his army. I see, I see some DTs in there too, which is interesting. I see a lot of freaking zealots there. So I'm just really being pushed back at this point trying to keep my top base alive because if I can keep that top base alive I have a chance um, you know I, I'm gonna continue out mining him and I'm actually kind of running low on minerals at this point as well so I'm also wondering it's like hey well, like, what actually is gonna happen when I run out of cash like, I'm not that rich anymore I have like 2k or so as he's uh, yeah I'm just gonna give up this base temporarily at least it's gonna run away for a little bit hiding my carriers meanwhile so I'm winning this fight. At least I hope I'm winning this fight. I'm definitely winning that fight. Oh, no. Such a free win that fight. As uh, he's starting to move towards the middle. I'm still out mining him, I think, at this point. Because I'm mining from at least two bases. He's killing my bottom base. I have a lot of probes that are not doing really much of anything. This entire game I had so many workers as well. I think it wouldn't be bad for me to try and throw away some of these workers. So I end up killing some of my own zealots. Probably could have just sacrifice them into my opponent here I had to turn off the auto cast on the battery <laughs> so I could kill my own probes cannons are too bad <laughs> they don't kill anything here I have a bunch of probes as well that I want to get rid of some zealots I want to get rid of as now I'm in the transition phase and this is the worst phase to get caught in because this is where my opponent is strongest and where I'm weakest so I'm just trying to base trade kind of I just try my absolute best to, to base trade Oh, get a kill. That's good. He's going to end up killing some of these dudes. It's not the end of the world, because that allows me to build more units. I really just want to base trade. All I care about right now is base trading. I base trade whenever he moves out, and I keep building more carriers whenever, um, you know, he's not moving out. On top of that, I'm also thinking to myself, what more do I want in my army? He doesn't have any disruptors, which means that Archons will be really strong. They're fully upgraded. They destroy Phoenix. They destroy Interceptors. Like, pure Archon destroys carriers as long as there are no disruptors. And he has no disruptors. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable in my spot right now. Just gonna blink him forward. Get a lot of kills here as well for free. He isn't so rich. I'm not that rich either anymore. But I'm rich enough that I can replace these units. If he loses a bunch of units, I'm not sure at this point if he can replace them. I think his supply isn't maxed anymore here. I think he's actually... Like, maybe 160, 150 supply or something. Uh, but he's very low worker count. So it's going to be like 110 army supply. So like, no, maybe even more. Never mind. Holy crap, that's so much supply. And I'm just slowly kind of losing units. 
probably <laughs> killing them one by one and getting a mothership. <laughs> Adding in a sentry as well for that guardian shield that we, we all want and love. Uh, getting more upgrades. I think I actually should have killed more of my own probes. I think it's actually a huge blunder that I didn't. I'm still hiding what I'm doing, but now he comes forward. I'm like, okay, well, I showed it. It's time to go now. So I'm just kind of moving in. <clears throat> I have a lot of Archons. Or I have four Archons, five Archons. A lot of Stalkers as well. So I'm winning the Interceptor battle. Um, using my Invisibility, Time Warp on top of that. And here I realize that I'm uh, winning this pretty freaking hard. Try to snipe one of these carriers, get one. Uh, reinforce with some of these Stalkers. As I end up losing well, some of my uh, Observers. But he loses so much that I don't really think it matters anymore. I'm completely out of gas at this point. He's expanding towards the bottom side. I'm more of one more Archon and I'm thinking to myself, the only way that I can lose if I just sit here and do nothing. Um, so I just want to clear bases. And ideally I want to fight at a base where my interceptors are out so that I have that advantage. So I'm like, okay, let's go in over here. Uh, but he's here already and I'm like, oh yeah, never mind. I have Guardian Shield, let's just go for it, whatever. <laughs> we fight and... Well, as you can see, I'm winning pretty freaking hard. I have so many stalkers, he doesn't have anything. And uh, that means I'm up 1-0. One, one game away from qualifying for the round of 16 after 30 minutes and 35 seconds. And that next game is going to be played on Ghost River. One of the smaller maps in the current map pool. Actually, the smallest map just in the current map pool. And it's a map that I'm actually very fond of in the Protoss versus Protoss matchup as well. It feels good for my style of trying to finish the game before 12 minutes. Um, although, last <laughs> the last game that didn't entirely work. We're going to try here. Uh, once again, big fat good luck have fun from Gong Fu Panda as well. And if I manage to win this game, I go through to the next round, of course, which is great. Let's have a quick look. What are my plans here? It's always difficult to pick your strategies because there's so many. That's the beauty of Proto, you know, losers, like, especially Zerg players, like, they have no real strategies, you know, they need to build drones and queens, and more drones and queens, oh, strategic mastermind, these guys are so these are piss off Zerg players, it's not strategy, he's building drones and queens, it's not strategy, unbelievable, it's like these people that have the, sometimes you see, like, these little, um, they're like, two ingredient things, you know, on the, on your Instagram reels or your YouTube shorts, He's like, uh, this is a delicious two-ingredient recipe. So I guess not really cooking, is it? Two-ingredient recipe. It's just mixing things together. Losers. It's the same with Zerg. It's just queens and drones the entire time. Me, I have loads of build orders. I play all of them. And here I'm going to play a proxy pilot. And then I'm just going to send my little probe around. I see that he's scouting. So my pilot, this is what we'd consider a fake proxy pilot. Or a fake proxy, because I'm not really proxying anything except my second pylon. So Gung Fu Banda right now, scouting my main base, he's like, hey, where's your second pylon? A second pylon should be going down, or you're gonna be supply blocked. Now there's two things that Gung Fu Banda can think, and that's number one is, <laughs> Harstam is an idiot, he forgot his second pylon. More likely is that I proxied my second pylon. I start my warp gate, I start a stalker, and then I don't build a second unit for a little bit, for like seven, eight seconds. That way my opponent believes I don't have gas for it. That kind of sells the idea of there being a real building proxy. I also make sure to send in my probe too late or fairly late so that um, it can't be a close by proxy. If you go with your probe in your opponent's main base at the two minute mark, then you can't have proxied any real building because your cybernetic score finishes two minutes in. You sometimes see people make this mistake, fake proxy pylon and then they scout at two minutes. Like, oh, come on, man, get it together, you noob. Don't do it that. So I got the pylon down on his side, so I saw nothing come down this ramp yet, which is actually kind of big, because that tells me that most likely it's not going to be Adepts, and if it's not Adepts, most likely it's not going to be Stargate. It could still be Stargate, but it's getting a little less likely in my mind. I'm going to get a robotics facility. The ideal scenario for me here is that my opponent opens up with a... Um, with just a push, a very aggressive push. The later Gung Fu's Nexus is, the better it's going to be for me. So I'm really praying for a push here. And the worst, I probably would be Stargate. Um, although if the Stargate is late, then it's also okay. So this is a late Nexus, that's good. I'm like 40, 50 seconds faster with my Nexus, which is huge. Now I want to get a scout. And I see that there's an Oracle there. So I once again cancel my robotics facility. 
think I actually should build a battery at this point. So last game I went for a really fast third base. Now I go for a really fast nexus. Uh, last game I went for a really fast third nexus. Now I went for a very fast third gate. So I have more aggressive options, basically. So I found this oracle as well, which is nice. I really think I should have built a battery here because I saw four stalkers. This is kind of risky what I'm doing. I'm not a huge fan of it. Not a huge fan of it at all. Because if he decides to move out at this point, I think I'm actually in serious trouble. If he had moved out with everything. Okay, and he's going to move out with six stalkers. As well as with two oracles. Which means that I need serious defense in two bases. And I don't think I quite have that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to walk towards this ramp. Oh, this really sucks. It's actually delayed him a bit further from walking up. Um, now he manages to escape as well. So this just wasn't perfect. And at the same time, he moves in towards my natural. Which... Also definitely isn't perfect. I end up losing 3-4 workers. A pretty poor defense so far out of me. Let's see if I can get any kills here on that oracle. I can't. Um, yeah, I'm just in a little bit of trouble. Just in a little bit of trouble. I do have a very high unit count. And as he built two oracles, his uh, blink most likely is going to be a little bit more delayed than mine is. I just feel a little bit stupid here. Because I feel like I could have done this much, much better. And I didn't. And... As a result, I'm not in a, a very great spot right now. I'm also not in position in my natural to deal with any potential oracles. The movement here is a little bit subpar, not gonna lie. Do see uh, oh, a lot of stalkers here at home for him. I also have a lot of stalkers though, which I'm very happy with. A lack of a third base. Really wondering what he's up to as he moves in right now. This is a mistake. He's gonna. He's not gonna lose an oracle here. Okay, and he flies himself into a corner. I thought I was going to lose an oracle there with that movement, but it was close. Because now that allows me to very easily position my stalkers in between the bases and then kind of take it from there. So I can leave three stalkers at home and then the others just kind of move across the map. Which is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm just kind of baiting him, you know. Just moving my stalkers back a bit. Seeing what I can do. My hallucination here is actually pushing this oracle forward because he's not on hold position. And as a result, I get an oracle kill, which is huge. Should have probably tried it with the other one as well, but I just send my uh, my hallucination straight at it. This is something you can do. Hallucination attacks, although they don't deal damage, they still force the the unit to walk away, the oracle to walk away, which I think is super cool. Now I see a decently sized army there. I think it has one immortal. I'm just trying to, you know, get something, delay this base a little bit, because I'm building a third base. I don't actually know what my eco is. And here, boom. Good first force field, good second force field as well. I'm gonna go fight this um, this immortal. I take down two immortals pretty much instantly. His target fire is really cool. I think Gung Fu Banda has very good predictive target fire as uh, knowing where I'm gonna, you know, basically go with my dudes. As uh, here, I'm gonna end up getting this stalker as well. That gives me uh, a, a bunch more stalkers to send across the map because I had a couple in my main base. And now he doesn't have a third. I have a third. He lost a bunch of his immortals. Um, and the only way I can really lose, in my mind here, is going to be against potentially a uh, Dark Shrine or against a major push-out, like in the, in the near future. So what I really want to do at this point is make sure he can't move out, scare him basically into moving out. I don't even mind trading into immortals because I'm outmining my opponent. So trades here, generally very good for me. Him using force fields, also quite good for me. The lower the force field count, the better it's going to be. I'm going to try and transition into charge bolts because I'm afraid of like a heavy immortal push. If he gets up to like three immortals, that might be hard. And charge slots are quite good against that. However, sentries these days are really good against charge as well. This is something we can't underestimate. Like sentries have gotten such a big buff that a lot of these later hitting immortal pushes are actually quite powerful like surprisingly so at least to a lot of people surprisingly so if you get up to like six seven sentries usually that'd be hot garbage but now it's not so bad it's really not so bad because you get so many force fields and the damage output of the sentry is crazy like there's the adepts don't deal with it that well as, uh, he's trying to rotate here. I don't have quite enough batteries set up yet. As um, I'm going to just be sending a couple of zealots around. I see that there's way too many sentries for me to really do something useful. And I'm afraid of him kind of moving into a direction where I'm not. So I'm just figuring out, okay, he's going to go back home and blinking forward. Snipe the prism. That's pretty big. As uh, I cancel two of my batteries. 
And I probably should have sent these zealots away. I think this was actually a mistake. So I blink him forward to try and kill this immortal and I barely do get it. But I think the last swipe of that zealot, it's kind of big, needs supply block out of me as well. I see no third base. So I really am very aware as to what is kicking off here. Like I know how far ahead I am and all I really need to do is not die. Um, but sometimes not dying is, is difficult. I'm going for a Templar Archive, six gases. I think the only thing that can beat me now is going to be like some type of a weird Archon push. Although that seems unlikely as well. Because I just have so many more units. I'm like, okay, if I get my own Archons, at least force fields are going to be way less useful. I see DTs now popping in. Um, and he spotted me spotting them. So I moved around a little bit. I do have, I think, a cannon in my natural, but it's not covering absolutely everything. As he moved into a position where I'm not entirely ready, I blink towards the left side. DTs are in this fight, as you can see. No, oh, I can't see them because my observer is not quite here yet. Uh, super battery is helping out. I try to heal my super battery. And my cannon is about to finish up. I snipe his observer so he can snipe mine. GG gets spelled. And I managed to qualify for the next round with a 2-0 versus Kung Fu Banda. And that feels really freaking good. And as of the recording of this video, this is the current setup in this group. So I am over here with 3-1, a plus 5 map score after beating Uthermal, Lambo and Gong Fu Banda. All 2-0 as well, losing to Rainer 1-2. So I have the best possible map score for the 3-1. We see Christianer with a plus 2 map score. Um, each group is going to have 3 players with 3-1. These players will fight each other in a bracket over here. Um, so the other group has Hero Marine, Elaser, and Goblin. And as Elaser here is the middle player, I believe I'm going to be playing against Elaser in the next round as my first opponent. I, that is my that is my belief. I, I don't think I'm wrong in that. So um, yeah, that's going to go happen next week, most likely. You can tune in for that live. If you don't have the time to watch it live, don't worry about it. They put it online as well. You can watch the VODs on the ESL archives. And otherwise, you can watch for my video when I inevitably win this entire tournament and I upload it to YouTube. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. If you have any suggestions on the format, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If there's anything more you guys want to know about the games in the future, just put it in there as well. If you want me to add certain types of information, put it there as well. This is a, a work in progress. I think it's my first video of this kind. So yeah, thanks for watching and bye bye.